Hey there. Today I would like to talk about a fountain pen and I had some doubts on whether to do this review because if I understand correctly this pen is discontinued so if you really want to get it then you have a bit of a problem. Now I was able to find at least one online shop which claims to still stock it but it also mentioned that it is a discontinued item. Um, so. Today we will talk about the Waterman Harmony. Uh, for the sake of clarity, I'll just call it Harmony, and not the, the French word, I can almost not pronounce it, Harmony. So we'll just say Harmony. The Harmony, I think, is discontinued, at least in this color. This coloring is discontinued. I have the feeling that um, Waterman still produces the Harmony, but not in this particular lacquer. So, I'll go through the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll show you some writing. This was one of the first somewhat more expensive fountain pens I, I got. And somewhat more expensive is of course a very relative term, but I think when I got it was about 70 euros. Maybe even 80 euros, something like that, which is clearly not at all that expensive for fountain pen but you know it's it's more expensive than some uh, so let's let's start at the top I like this sort of cap the end cap of the cap itself it has the uh, Waterman logo this sort of looped W hope you can see it uh, I, I I like it I think it's kind of nice it's not too uh, you know extreme but it's it, it looks nice it has this interesting clip which is flexible enough to be used, but not so tight as to damage your shirt. The clip that is sort of open, that's one of the trademarks of Waterman. All Waterman pens have a clip that is open, opened up to some extent. In this cl uh, particular pen, it's, it's pretty extreme. It's really just two bits of metal, which I kind of like. I think it, it, it looks nice. It's, it's original. It's not the, the standard clip type. I also like, and I'm not sure whether you can really see that very well, but I think you can at least sort of, there is a sort of a type of this, this gold ring. There is a ridge on it, and the ridge sort of is, is a little bit oblique, which is kind of nice. And if you move it around like this, you can see that the, this ridge kind of moves a little, because it's, it's at an oblique angle to the pen, which is, which is kind of nice. It's not sharp at all, that ridge. It's, it's really rounded, so it's, you won't hurt your fingers, which I always like. So that's, that's nice. Then we have, at the end, there is another sort of gold cap, which is not real gold, I don't believe it is. But it, it, it looks nice. It gives the pen a nice balanced look, I think, with the gold, and then another gold ring, and then gold there. What I really like about this pen is the lacquer. I think it just looks great. This very deep, dark red with the black. It's sort of well. It's it's a bit like like squares or, or rectangles. I don't think my camera will pick that up in in great detail, but I really really like that design. It's very dark and it's 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 very intense. So that's really nice. Uh, then the final detail on the cap is that here at the end it says Waterman Barry because I think Waterman is now based I think it was an American brand and is now based in in Paris or manufactured in Paris or whatever the cap clicks in place it's not a screw-on cap which is something I actually like because it's almost impossible to accidentally pull off a screw-on cap and with these click things it's a bit easier to do so but okay I can live with that the good thing is it clicks in place really securely so it's it's really really a tight fit which is good in this case the nib is gold plated now my camera is not going to pick this up but it has the Waterman logo on there it also again it says Perez and it just says Waterman M because it's a medium nib 
I, I like the nib a lot. It's it's pretty smooth, and it's it's medium, which I like. I have two fine Waterman nibs, one of which I really don't like, and one is okay. But of the Waterman pens I have, this is definitely my favorite nib. It gives a very nice line. I'll show you that later when I do some writing. It opens up to reveal a converter. It will take Waterman cartridges, not I. I don't think international cartridges. I think this is proprietary Waterman cartridges, and it has this very standard Waterman converter. Now I think it should be supplied with the pen. I bought it at a local office supply shop, and I didn't get one of these. So that's a bit odd. In any case, they're not that expensive. So I I, I bought one. These cartridges work well. My my biggest issue with them is that you cannot disassemble them, which may be a small issue, but if you're a person like me and you like to change inks a lot, then it's it's so much easier to clean if you can just unscrew this and and flush out the plastic. Now, the only way to clean it is just to put in water, push it out again, push it in, suck it in again, push it out again. So that's you know it's a bit of a bother, but in all it it does work. It functions well. So okay, small issue. One thing I do like is that this is just the grip section I'm holding. You can take out the feed and the nib. And you have to be a little careful with that, you don't want to damage anything. But the nice thing is that on the feed section there are these little notches which you probably can't see. Maybe you can see it on the... Um, you see these little of lags on the uh, the nib well, they just fit in place so if you put it on the if you put the nib on the um, feet again then it'll always I can't do it I can't I have to look at this yeah if you do this then it's it's just always the, the nib and the feet are always aligned in the exact same manner which is kind of nice because it, it, uh, it kind of helps with ink flow the bad thing is you cannot sort of induce a little bit more flex by, by moving this up or down a bit. It really has to fit in its spot. If it doesn't then you know it just won't fit into the grip section again. Uh, the grip section you can't see that but there is a wider part and a more narrow part. So the wider part takes the nib and the more narrow part takes the underside of the feet. I just have to check this yet yeah, that way. It just snaps in place again and you know, you're done. Now I love it when you can do that to a pen because as I just said I, I switch inks a lot so I have to clean my pens very regularly and then it's it's really easy if you can just take this out and flush this with water and flush the nib with water and then put it all back together again. It's much easier than trying to flush it out while it's all in place. You can, you know, it's, it's more it's easier to, to access the, the feed. So that's good. I'll put it back together again. And my experience with the pen is that it is a very smooth writer. It can pretty much deal with any ink. I've never had any, you know, flow problems or, or things like that. So that is really good. Uh, it is a fairly. How shall I put that? It's not so much small. This is not really a fair comparison because this is an oversized yard lead. But in any case, what you may be able to see is that this is much thinner. It's less wide. The diameter is much smaller than that of this pen, which you can really see like this. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's a a pretty small pen, as in not very wide, um, which may be a problem for people like me who have large hands, because my fingers are wider than the pen is. Uh, so it, it's it's a bit narrow, but it has a good size. So for me, especially if I post it, then there's absolutely no problems, and I can write with it very comfortably. One thing that may be an issue for some people is that the grip section is completely smooth. It's made out of plastic. It is slightly tapered, uh, but it is smooth. Now I have to say I've never had any problems with it. In fact, I like this grip a lot because it it is pretty narrow, but for some reason it's very pleasant to hold. So I can write with this pen without any problems, even though I have large hands. So that's that's very good, I think. Do I have any issues with the pen? Well, apart from the fact that it uses a converter that you can't disassemble, not really. Yes, it's it's 
narrow as I just said it doesn't give me any problems the nib is great it lays down a very decent amount of ink a very nice line um, as I said I have I've had no problems with any ink whatsoever it really works pretty well and again I just I just love the looks the the, the black and the, the deep red is just awesome I really like that so in all I think this is a very good pen and it's a real pity that it's discontinued now again I think I think that the Harmony pens are still being produced I think I was diff I couldn't really find this very well on the Waterman website but I think this particular deco this this lacquer uh, the, the red and black that's gone I think that's a discontinued so if you would really like to have one of these pens you either need to get one second hand or do a web search as I said I, I could find at least one web store that claimed to still have them in stock so in any case I wouldn't wait too long if they're discontinued then they will disappear at some point so that's my experience with the pen. I'm going to show you how it writes next. And that's it. See you later. Okay, here we go with the um, Waterman Harmony. Uh, nice pen. I told you about all features I like. Today I'll just show you how it writes. So, I never really post this pen, because it's already quite a decent length. So I'll just do some writing and I'll show you what it looks like. Today I've got it inked up with uh, Gerbin's Vert Olive, which is a very olive-like color, as the name implies. And as you can see on my fingers, where I got some ink on, uh, I got some ink on them, so, um, you know. Uh, a fountain pen uses trademark characteristic, I think. So let's do some writing. Writing is pretty smooth, you may hear a lot of noise, that's just the uh, microphone of the camera being a little overactive. It's not at all scratchy. I have one Waterman pen with a fine nib, now that is scratchy. This one is not particularly so. So it's a, a fairly smooth pen, as you can see you can lay down quite a lot of ink pretty easily and pretty consistently, which I always like. As I said, medium nib, so... Um, you won't get an extremely fine line. When it comes to flexibility, that's absent. There is no real flex. I'll just try to show you. I'll start with no pressure, and then as I move to the right, I'll add more pressure. There's just almost no opening up of the tines. Now, you will see some variation, but it's not particularly excessive or anything. So, I always like to write hello when it comes to flex because with all these downward strokes you can add some pressure. As you can see there is very little variation overall. So that's that. Um, when it comes to very fast writing, I will just completely sacrifice legibility here. As you can see, if I write quickly, the feed will just keep up very well. So that's always, I always like it, because I, I tend to write fairly quickly, normally. And indeed, then it's difficult to read my handwriting. Uh, but then it's, it's good if you don't end up with railroading or just, you know, dry scratches on the paper. Which is not all the case here. So, I would say... Thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.